Welcome to the Arts Program Share on Theater and the Three Pillars. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, our presenter is Kimberly LaCroix, and she has been doing a phenomenal job of starting and growing theater programs for kids, uh, mostly up in the Northeast. And so I'm going to turn it over to Kimberly. And Kimberly, thank you so much for leading our webinar today. Um, I decided to share what knowledge I have about um, building theater program at the Y. Um, I started my career at the Y as the Performing Arts Director for the YMCA of the North Shore. I was hired to develop and implement uh, theater programming for an association of six YMCAs there in Massachusetts. And then just about a year ago, I switched back down to the South Shore, um, and now I'm the Senior Director of Fine and Performing Arts here. Um, and a big Unmute your line. Nine, per star six or pen six. Building and developing theater program. Um, I also I've grown in theater, um, and the values of theater beyond the stage are um, really ingrained in me. They're just kind of intrinsic in my thinking. Um, so I look forward to your questions at the end, and if I brush over anything, um, feel free to ask for more clarification. Um, to start, I'm go over kind of my top tips about how to um, start and grow a theater program, and then I'll get into those pillars. Um, the first foundation I have for building a program is to start with productions. Um, I'm, I'm overseeing now fine and performing arts, and it, this is an interesting thing to talk about with people because in the fine arts, you take a painting class before you show your paintings in a gallery, but in theater, I've been doing theater since I was tiny, but I didn't take a theater class until I was in college. So to start a theater program, um, it's really best I've found to start with productions uh, that draws in kids, um, and then you can have a base of kids who will do things. They'll be all the multiple productions, and then they want to take acting lessons, or they want to take an improv class, or be part of a theater club. Uh, but I've found it's hard to start those things until you've um, had productions consistently running and you've built that base of students. And if you have that, you can expand, supplement, and diversify your programming. So when I started work on the North Shore of Massachusetts, we started a big production. We had 140 kids and Annie Jr. And then the, in that, then the fall, in the spring, we had a big production of Beauty and the Beast. Again, two big casts. Um, it was really exciting. Um, but then once we had that, we were able to take 10 teens and write a show collaboratively about their hopes and fears for the future. A totally different kind of thing than doing a huge Disney musical theater production. Um, but again, it fits really beautifully into the pillars of the Y um, and serves those kids in a totally different way. Um, so start with productions, build your base, and then you can really diversify your, your program to serve the children that are Y. Pillars, um, what our webinar is really about today. Um, for youth women, I mean, my, again, this is so intrinsic to me because I've been in the uh, in theater for so long, but um, there's so much research. And the last slide in this webinar is um, just a, a list of just a few articles that flesh really beautifully the value of theater and what it does in kids' lives. Um, as far as uh, more emotional development, um, theater develops confidence, self-awareness, community building, leadership, teamwork, so much more. Um, academically, it develops articulation, spatial awareness, sequencing, problem solving, creative thinking. Uh, I tell you how many kids um, who are on our programming, their parents afterwards have come up to me and, and said that their math scores have improved from theater. Um, the things that theater develops really are are unique. Um, there's a great article called Why Arts Education is, is Crucial. It was put out by Edutopia. And from, uh, the first couple paragraphs in that says, art does not solve problems but makes us aware of their existence. Our education, on the other day, hand, does solve problems. Years of research shows that it's closely linked to almost everything that we as a nation say we want our children, want for our children, and from our schools. Academic achievement, social and emotional development, civic engagement, and equitable opportunity. Involvement in the arts is associated with gains in math, reading, cognitive ability, and critical thinking, and verbal skill. Arts can also improve motivation, 
concentration, confidence, and teamwork. And that's the start of that article. Um, but even more, I think, impressive than those articles are the stories of kids you get to work with whose lives are really changed, who are, they go so much through the, the programming. Um, this is from a child who had just started with our programming. Her mom um, emailed us afterwards and said, the Y provided our five-year-old daughter with her first exposure to theatrical arts. The program introduced her to stealing go, taught her how to socialize with children of different ages, boosted her self-confidence, and gave her a great feel for the culture of theater. She wound up with a strong sense of accomplishment and is counting minutes until she can perform again. Um, it's a five who's already growing in self-confidence. She has a sense of accomplishment. Um, it's pretty incredible. And then the child was able to stand up and speak eloquently because of the confidence and the ability to project, which she learned from the theater at the Y. She has taken skills you taught her and has used them to perform better in school. Instead of taking away from her schoolwork, the theater experience has accentuated her work. As she continues to grow and change, she will take all these wonderful skills with her. Um, one of the stories is, uh, I call it my Lucy story. It was a student who had, um, she was, we've all worked with her in a camp. She just did one camp with us. And so many kids we work with, they do, you know, a 10 week theater production or they do production after production. You work with them for years and you get to really see them grow in beautiful ways. Um, but this is a cool story because we worked with Lucy for just two weeks. It was a two week camp production. And she's a really quiet kid. She was um, schooled, one of eight kids in her family. Um, and she was, and she was a great listener, she, but she wasn't prone to raising her hand, sharing her opinions. Um, but over the course of the two weeks, we really saw her grow. Um, she, she was raising her hand by the end of camp, and she was speaking up, and she had a few lines in our show, and she did them beautifully. She was so articulate. Um, we saw growth in her, but you never really know how that, that translates outside of camp or outside of the why. Um, until her mom came up to me with tears in her eyes after the camp performance. Lucy found her voice. In home, um, among her siblings, she, her mom said for the first time had really found her voice. She was holding her own with her siblings. She was speaking at the dinner table. Um, her mom couldn't believe the growth she had seen in her daughter um, just in two weeks of theater at the Y. Um, there's no doubt that the arts are, are vital um, and theater is, can be integral in our youth development. As the living, um, theater is active. <laughs> I sweat more graphing for two hours than I ever do running for five miles. Um, really, our kids work hard. They leave rehearsal tired, um, and, and it's active. Um, it's also really emotional. A lot of people think that good actors are liars, are good liars. Um, but actually, good actors are people who are honest and brave. Um, we ask our kids to be vulnerable with one another, to tap into um, their experiences and um, to share those with others, and then to glean from them and bring them on stage to pray. Um, for health and for spirit and body, um, theater definitely taps into those. And theater is socially conscious. We'll talk about that more in our next slide. Um, but with every production that we do, whether a production of Annie or writing a show with 10 teens, um, you tap into the things that these kids really want to do in the world um, and the things that they think are important in their community. Um, Annie not just a cute show to do with a bunch of kids. It's a show about hope. Um, the first time I did it was that the Great Recession started <laughs> in the U.S. It was the year that Obama was elected um, the first time, and he ran on a campaign of hope. Uh, there were all of these very culturally relevant themes, and we drew those out, and we talked about those with kids. You do fit the roof. You're talking about prejudice, um, an issue that's still relevant today, even if you're talking about um, Jews being persecuted in Russia. Um, so, again, we're getting into the next slide, but um, from a parent, from one of those students who did that um, show we wrote with a group 
group of teens, um, and they created a really unique bond among them, and this is what she said about it. The Y helped them to create an unconditionally loving community that they gained so much support from and would never have experienced without these programs. Again, I only speak from what I see in my own kids, but I believe their experience is typical. Without you guys, they wouldn't have, ha wouldn't have each other and have all become important and positive parts of each other's lives. And they and their parents credit you all with that. As far as social responsibility, um, my background is primarily in political theater, in theater of the oppressed. Um, which is a technique that came out of Brazil. Um, but I think a lot of people think of theater and they think Broadway and jazz hands, um, but maybe not first to the political implications of theater. But theater has always had a political voice. Um, ancient Greece, where there were constantly anti-war plays or um, plays about the gender norms and things like that, um, to uh, the bread and puppet theater, was integral in bringing to light apartheid in South Africa, to video drama in Rwanda post-genocide, um, used as a reconciliation tool. Theater has always had a political voice from, how, from ancient Greece to now. Um, theater press is a tool, like I said, that came out of Brazil that's used internationally um, to develop cross-cultural reconciliation to give um, people a voice in their community. Um, and those are things I integrate into all of our programming, no matter if I'm working with five-year-olds um, or if I'm working with teens. A great quote from our article, researchers at the University of Illinois at Chicago report that people who engage in the arts and those who see others engage in the arts contribute more to society than those who don't. Um, if we look at those things, the skills that we're developing in youth through theater, um, you can see that could translate directly into social responsibility. If we're giving kids the skills to find their voice, realize their words have worth, and that they have a voice in their community, um, then they will probably take up the chance to speak into their community, to contribute to society, um, to make changes, and to see that they are responsible. Um, another Resource uh, article uh, presentation is Ken Robinson's first TED talk that he did called Schools Kill Creativity. Um, if you haven't watched that, I really highly recommend it. I watch it at least once a year at this point, if not a couple times. Um, he talks really beautifully about how the arts, um, dance, theater, visual arts, music, all give our kids the skills to engage with society and make changes. Um, our schools, because so much arts funding is being cut, um, it's not being able to serve our kids in that way. So more than ever, it's necessary that the way step in and do that. Um, that's not what Ken Robinson says, so that's what I say. Um, like I said, last slide has even more articles and things like that. Um, but that's the end of my presentation, so I'd love now to hear any questions you might have. Thank you so much, uh, Kimberly. Again, if you guys have any questions, please put it in the chat box, and we will be sure to um, uh, Kimberly answer it. Uh, Kimberly, at the three pillars, can you talk a little bit about um, the marketing that you do for the program and how you use this language or the three pillars to um, market the program, not only to the people who you work with, to, to or give you the funding and support to do this, but also to the uh, to the participants, families. Sure. As far as marketing, kind of upfront before programming starts. I mean, the benefit statements on our yep. um, on our are an awesome way to draw attention to that. Um, so it's putting Good Man Charlie Brown. We put build comps, you know, something like that. Um, so you draw attention to it that way, just through um, how the rebranding has allowed us, has given us that. Um, but then as far as through the programming, throughout the programming, how I talk to parents um, and how I talk to kids, when we play a theater game, we debrief after every theater game. I don't just, you know, it's not just a game that then we pass on. We circle up and I say, what story are we just working on? 
And incredible because they know. They'll say listening or they'll say uh, teamwork or um, they'll, you know, after you've given them, the, them lingo, they'll spatial awareness um, or sequencing, things like that. Um, I'll, it doesn't remind you of anything you've ever done in math class. Kind of thing. And then they make those connections that we're working on those skills. So we talk about with the kids. Um, I find that they're often our best spreading the word, and then um, with parents, especially at theater performances, um, we always write a director's note in the program about um, whoever's directing the show about what they're really focusing on, what, um, you know, social things they wanted to focus on through the show, what um, skills they were really working on developing with the kids, and, and what ways that they saw those kids excel and build community and develop together over the course of the rehearsals. Um, and they often take the opportunity to speak before shows, too, um, about why the YMCA is committed to this programming um, and why it fits. Um, yeah. Answer your question? Hi. Um, where, uh, someone would like to know uh, where you guys find these sort of catchphrases or the uh, benefit statements to be to be used in marketing. Um, do you guys have a, a sort of a cache of these, these phrases, or do you just sort of uh, think of them with your you know marketing mindset? Yeah, I think of them depending on the programming. Uh, I don't. We have like a cache of them anywhere. I wish we did. That would be useful. Yeah, I'm wondering, and I don't know that much about the Brain Resource Center, but that might be a place that folks can go for potential benefit statements um, that can be used. Yeah. Question uh, is, you had a lot of quotes from kids. Can you talk about the, you know, where you get those quotes and what kind of evaluations that you do in your programs? Sure. Um, so they were mostly from parents um, and, and parents often email after a production, especially if there are families that you've been involved with for, you know, multiple productions. Um, so either through email or through written notes um, that then, you know, ask if we can share um, and use that in, in programs and things like that. Um, but we also do do, and so some of them may have been from, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but they may have been from today's, after every production um, and after every, you know, summer camp season, um, we do phase to all of the participants so that we can hear back from them, uh, you know, skills were really developed, uh, what pillars of the why they felt were, were focused on in the programming, um, and it gives them lots of opportunity to give written feedback as well, um, both constructive and, you know, encouraging so that we're constantly trying to grow and gear our programming towards what families are wanting. I want to just double check if anyone has additional uh, questions. Be sure to type it in the uh, chat function. Uh, Kimberly, would you say uh, is one of the learnings that you've had besides starting with a production? Um, what's really important that you would love for people to make sure they take away? I would, so, like I said, I didn't come from a children's theater background. Um, I came from a political theater background. So um, I think I started at the way um, when into how in kids could be. Um, that I didn't anticipate that if you set your expectations, my goal has always been to create as close to professional theater uh, as happens to be did by eight-year-olds as possible. Um, if, you, if you take it really seriously, they take it really seriously. If you take expectations high, more often than not, they exceed them. Um, I can't too many times I've seen it a, a go beyond my direction on stage. Um, and that moment is incredible. When you see the kid who, who you know, Two months prior, couldn't say a line without looking at the floor. Now, belling it out on stage um, on his own accord, and you know this kid's life has been changed. Um, 
they are never going to be the same again. Uh, they, they, you know, come into their own. I, I think, yeah, I completely underestimated that. Um, and also underestimated, I think, um, how brilliant kids are. <laughs> Um, how if you give them the like the framework to to tell an important story, they they do. Um, they really, like I said, they take it seriously. So they're so quick to see the depth beyond, like I said, the jazz hands. Um, to see like the depth of relationships that are being told on stage, or um, the depth of the issue that's being grappled with. Um, and that's been just a beautiful thing to see these kids really excel in a way that you didn't anticipate. About auditions, and does everyone who auditions for your show get in? And if not, or if they don't get the role that they want, how do you um, handle or deal with rejection? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. <laughs> and I think it, um, it, it varies depending on, you, know, you always have to know your kids and um, that. So, uh, it depends on the show. So for um, our main stage musical theater productions, it's they're usually advertised. Everyone who's audition is, who auditions is cast. Um, so for the, that's because with those productions, they're you know often expandable casts. You can have lots of orphans in Annie. Um, it's not really a defined number. So yes, all the auditions are who audition are cast for those productions. But then I try to do at least two shows a year that aren't like that. Um, that you know, are a teen show and it only has 16 roles. Um, or writing a show we're only going to take 10 kids. Um, and I think that's important because the reality is in theater that the time. Everyone who auditions is cast, and I think that's important an important lesson to learn of the, you know, for our kids how to deal with that. Um, but you have to kind of coach them through. So um, with the those where everyone's cast, and then kids who might what like what role they get. Um, if we've worked with them before, I know this is going to be a disappointment. Um, we always make those phone calls. We talk to the kids. We talk to the parents, um, and we make all of our, our the process as transparent as possible. So um, we take notes during all of our auditions. We keep those on file so that if a or someone says, why did they get that role or why didn't they get this role, I look at my notes and I can sit down with them and say, you know, this and this and this really beautifully in auditions. But we did know that um, they should work on these two things as well. Um, and here is that they can work on it. Um, here are some opportunities that they have to grow in those ways. Um, or, you know, we cast them in this role because of these skills, because we thought they could excel in these ways. Um, I, like I said, I think that's a situation you have to manage uh, with the kids and with the family. I don't think it's something that you get right every time. Um, but if you make yourself accessible and you try to be as transparent as possible, um, I'd say times out of ten, parents especially are really receptive and helpful, and um, kids come around. And like I said, well, I think that um, disappointment is a lesson to learn, um, just like all the other lessons of theater. Um, as far as kids not being accepted into a show at all, uh, then I think it's it's something that you have to take the time to call the kids. And tell if they did well, and thank for their time, and may try to engage them in a different way. Um, you know, can you help design the set um, or something like that. Um, or he'd love to see you at the next auditions. Here's when they are. Um, does that question? I think so. Yeah, I think that that's. Uh, there's no one answer for that one. I don't think. Yeah, I think that those oh. were some really good tips. All right, I want to just be very sin of everyone's time. It is 1131 Central Time. And so there aren't any other burning questions that folks have uh, in the chat box. I think um, 
like to give Kimberly a very hearty thank you so very much. As I mentioned, this uh, will be posted on exchange for you guys who want to utilize the quotes or the references that Kimberly has so kindly um, given to, to us for today. And um, that looks like, looks like we answered everyone's question, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Yeah, problem. Thank you. Fantastic day, and please remember we have another webinar, uh, dance programs at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time today.